Hello and welcome to that man. This is a MAGA related topic and today we are coming from the floor. Yeah, it's just, I, I want to try something a little bit different. But this is a whole, one of those things where I just go, oh I bought all of this stuff and you go, yep you sure have. Let me know in the comments on what you've bought this month and always remember to like and subscribe and do all of that normal stuff. Let's get unhauling, shall we? Hauling ass. First up is Find Yotsuba. This is a Yotsuba art book, and by God, this is something special indeed. Um, normally with art books, you kind of look at them once and you kind of just go, oh, that's about it, I'm never going to look at it again. But Find Yotsuba is something incredible because, yeah. Found her. Found her. Found her. This is the worst Where's Wally ever. But man, it's photos with the artwork drawn on top of it. I just think that's something incredible. And nearly every single one of these pages is something to smile at. Look, it's Nara. Well, that, that's Yotsuba. It's Yotsuba and Nara. And I don't know, I just I thought this was absolutely beautiful and something incredibly unique that you don't normally see. Amazing title. It's Yotsuba as well. Um, this is actually the last of the Yotsuba things I had to buy, so yay, I can finally do that review I was promising you guys all that time. Next up, we have Raw Hero, because Raw is Hero. Ah, uh, just like Raw is War. Yeah. Do we, does, is it still called Raw's War? Is it just called Raw now? Um, wrestling fans, over to you. I can't really show much of this because, it, as you can imagine, it's an edgy title made by the same genius who brought us Prison School. That's right. It's not really a spiritual successor, but if you like Prison School, you're going to have a lot of fun with this. Pretty much everything in here is either edgy or it's incredibly spoilery. But I did do a, an entire video on it up there, or in the comments, or something like that. Go check it out if you want to hear more about Raw Hero. It's an absolute fantastic title, and I would really recommend everybody who wants another prison school-like comedy to check this one out. It's about superheroes as well, so, you know, we don't need My Hero Academia anymore. Not like we ever did. Next up is Overlord Volume 2. This is Overlord a la carte. I did do a review on Volume 1 a while back and you know what? This is just a load of fun. It's just a load of short stories put together. I love Overlord and it's going to make the wait for Volume 12 that much more bearable. Uh, fun fact is that I actually uh, picked up Volume 12. I ordered it and it hasn't turned up yet. Apparently it got delayed for all the way from February to June so absolutely lovely. Overlord a la carte, yeah, actually volume 3 as well, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, it's just like it says short stories, all the randomness in Nazarick, you get a lot of focus on uh, Albedo and Shalti, if you like an Isekai Quartet and you like the Overlord characters from it, or even if you like Overlord in general and you just want something a little bit more goofy, I would definitely recommend picking up these two, or you could pick up this one, Overlord the Undead King, oh! Um, I don't think I ever covered volume one of this. It's uh, another Undead spin-off, another Overlord spin-off. This one feels more chibi. Um, it's, again, it's more ridiculous. In fact, this is like more four corner panels. It's a lot more easy to digest. I've personally found this one a little bit more fun than this one. This one's a little bit serious at times and the artwork's hit and miss, whereas this one is a little bit more consistent. I, um, I really enjoyed this one. I actually haven't read Volume 2 yet, but uh, I'm really looking forward to doing so because it's more Overlord and it's more stupidness. What What's not to like? Unless you hate Overlord and it's... We're probably not going to see eye to eye on many things. Next up is Volume 8 of the Quintessential Quintuplets. It's got Nino on the front. Some people will fight me and say she is not best girl, but she is, most certainly, a girl. And um, the lights just reflecting of it. It's more quintessential quintuplets. It's a lot of fun. It's an absolute fantastic read. We're still miles behind the digital versions. Speaking of digital versions, I've noticed Kadansha's like really up the prices of the digital stuff, which is really annoying me. Digital used to be a cheap alternative to the physical. Now it's pretty much the same price. Or some sometimes the physical's cheaper. Not on. Sort your prices out. But yeah, quintessential quintuplets. I would really recommend it if you like a harem comedy. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of ridiculousness. Um, 
I'm 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 rooting for Miku. I'm really I'm rooting for Miku. Miku is my favourite one out of them so far. I know it's pretty much ending um at the moment in Japan, but we've still got I think another six volumes. I think it's ends on volume fourteen or something. Is it twelve? Twelve or fourteen, it's one of the two. But yeah, it's ending soon, if not already ended. I'm I'm trying to keep spoiler free on it. Which is very difficult when you go on Twitter and somebody just goes, Oh, it was this all along. Oh God, I hate you spoiler people. Next up is a title that has been frequently been put up. That is Silver Spoon Volume 13. Yes, we're pretty much at the end of this one. It's quite weird that Silver Spoon and uh, Quintessential Quintuplets are both ending around the same time. They're two of the series that I, I actually collect in each month. What am I going to collect now that uh, Silver Spoon and Quintessential Quintuplets is done? Oh, God. Well, Quintuplets is going to be another probably about another year or so to be fair but we've only got two more volumes of Silver Spoon and I can't recommend this one enough I love it I absolutely adore this series it's so good if this is the first time you're actually listening to me talking about it then why aren't you subscribed yet go subscribe but uh, Quintessence of Quintuplets. Uh, but Silver Spoon is about a young man who uh, enrolls in a farming college and he's starting to find his way in the world. Um, there's a lot of great farming puns and great farming moments, just as such as that time he rode the tractor. You know, that time he rode the tractor. But no, Silver Spoon is an absolute fantastic title from the same maker as Full Metal Alchemist. And I will ride this to the end. I prefer this to Full Metal Alchemist. Both are fantastic, but I just think this one's a little bit more relatable and I don't know, I just enjoy it quite a bit more. But we had Overlord a la carte. Now it's Kimono Friends a la carte. Back to Japari Park Edition 2. It's Kimono Friends. What more can I see? It's cute girls who are also animals. It was really popular a few years ago. Not so popular now, but I absolutely adore this series. It was one of those ones where I looked at it and I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to enjoy this, but I absolutely love it. Fantastic series and I would really recommend people go and check it out. The artwork on this one is really nice. Again, it's all these little short stories, this time in the world of Kimono Friends. I think this is just kind of a la carte here that just kind of uses anthology. Back in my day, they were called anthology. But still, if you like Kimono Friends, you can do a lot of fun with this. I've not read Volume 2 yet, but Volume 1 was a lot of fun. One of the things I never do in these unboxing videos is I almost never actually buy a huge amount of a CM series. Sure, I managed to buy two or three volumes of Overlord, but not really unlike other people where they just go, I bought this huge haul and they have an entire bleach or something like that on there. But I did. I did actually buy quite a few of one series as of late. And that is, of course, that one series I've been talking about quite a bit over the last few weeks. And that is Nichijou. I got Volume 5, Volume 6, Volume 7, Volume 8, Volume 9, and Volume 10. That's right, I got six volumes of Nichijou, My Ordinary Life, to complete the entire collection. I'm quite tempted to actually start buying City. Um, one of the things I actually was promising myself over the last few months was, I will cut down on buying manga, at least physically. However, I've managed to sort out my room and I've got a huge amount of new space. So more manga can be bought right now and with more in the future. Uh, I'm still going to rein it in a little bit, just kind of continue stuff. I mean, out of all of these, I think only Raw Heroes is the newest one. But yeah, so yeah, Nichijou is an absolute fantastic, it's hilarious over the top four coma and sometimes not four coma joke comedy gag series about the ordinary lives of a bunch of students which isn't ordinary we have robots and professors and talking cats that's right it's absolutely ridiculous and it's a title I would absolutely 100% recommend if you want something chill light-hearted and ridiculous I also bought Helvetica Standard. Bold. Yeah, this is another one uh, by the same author as 
Nichijou. It is essentially the spiritual successor to Nichijou. So yeah, if you like Nichijou, you're going to enjoy this one. I actually haven't had a chance to read a huge amount of it. It was bought mainly for the complete history of Nichijou that I completed and it's up there. Go check it out because yeah, it's Nichijou and you want to learn all about the history of stuff, don't you? Don't you? But yeah, it, Nichijou and Helvetica standards, they're ridiculous, they're over the top stuff. Stuff that I absolutely adore in this kind of medium. Next up is another series that I've been collecting for quite some time now. And it's one that I've been collecting over the last few months. And you'll recognise it from a bunch of hauls. And that is Delicious and Dungeon Volume 5. Ah, uh, dungeon crawling while eating pretty much everything. What are we going to eat this time? We're going to eat a sea serpent. A wide corn, wyvern. Dungeon cleaner. A dryad and a cockatrice. I'm not sure how they're going to eat a dryad. Hmm, this could get very poorly very quickly. But yeah, this is kind of Dungeons and Dragons, only they eat everything. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm I'm tempted to just buy the, the rest of the, the, them because it's it's what I, I love reading and as soon as I read it, I buy the next one then it sits on my shelf for ages because it's like it doesn't come in the next few days. Ah, the perils of manga. But yeah, Delicious and Dungeon is one that I would really recommend more people check out because, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun indeed. Speaking of fun and popularity, because as you can imagine, these aren't the stuff that I imagine most people have in their collection. However, there is that series that is incredibly popular right now. You know the one. Interspecies Reviewers! The Prostitution Monster Girl Manga and yeah it's absolutely fantastic still it's still stupid it's still incredibly porny but you know what porny porny horny hmm porny horny don't know why I said that but yeah Interspecies Reviewers is still one of those titles that I'm you know you're going to enjoy it if you enjoy that kind of thing. If you don't, you're not going to enjoy it. Enough said. But it's one that I would really recommend people um, give it a shot anyway. That's about as much I can say from it. But at least I'm collecting the popular stuff now. The stuff that everybody has to have in their collection. I still haven't read Pluto, by the way. Or Vinland Saga. Or Monster. But I have interspecies reviewers. Next up comes the light novel segment, and yes, we have, well, three, technically more than three, um, but we're going to see three volumes of different series. The first up is Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world, Yunyun's turn! Yes, Yunyun, the best girl, the most pure of all of the girls, finally has her chance to shine in Konosuba, an explosion on this wonderful world. I love this series. I love this series so much. Um, volume 2 is not as good as Volume 1 though. Uh, it, it, it just isn't. Um, I would really recommend that you've read at least up to Volume 9 of the series. But there's still a lot of fun going on there. Um, I'm about halfway through at the moment so I can't really comment too much on it. But it's more Konosuba goodness. What more can you want? A million quid to go with Konosuba stuff would be handy wouldn't it? Yeah. You could buy all of the manga with that much. Also, I finally bit the bullet and bought Toradora Volume 6. The reason I hadn't bought this one for quite some time is because I got Volumes 1 to 5 reasonably cheap and Volume 7 incredibly cheap. This one was stuck at 10.99 for a long time and you know what? I just eventually bit the bullet because it was annoying me that I was going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. As if I couldn't count. So I eventually just bit the bullet and just paid full price for it. I don't really like doing that. I like to have them a little bit of a saving. Nearly everything on here I've bought is, is with a saving at some point. But yeah, this is the first full price manga, uh, well, light novel I've bought in some time. But it's Toradora and it's one of my favourite light novels that I'm reading at the moment. I believe they've actually caught up and they're actually finished with this now. So I'm, I'm going to try and catch up with them maybe once I finish their Konosuba. I'm going to start taking their Toradora back into work. What I've been doing with light novels, I've been reading stuff on a morning. Um, I take like a volume to work with it, me, a physical one. And then the digital one I'll read on the night, so I'm getting through tri twice as much uh, stuff. It doesn't work like that. I'm just kind of dividing my attention. I probably would be finished Connoisseur, but I'm the digital one if I was taking them into work. 
oh well. But yeah, Toradora Volume 6 um, will be to be read very soon. And we are now looking at the last of the physical titles, and that is something, a series that is incredibly special to me, and that is Full Metal Panic. Now, Full Metal Panic was the first ever anime that I bought. I bought it alongside Love Hina, or maybe I bought it before Love Hina, and for a long time I've been hugely into the series. The original Tokyo Press was the first light novel I actually purchased. So, you know, I felt I had to collect the rest of the series when G Novel Club released it. And you know what? This is an absolute beauty of a series. Look, I mean, look at the, how the quality on that. It's actually higher quality than the Tokyo Pop ones from years ago. So I can't complain about them. It's fantastic to be able to own these officially again. Um, Tokyo Pop only got up to Volume 5, I believe, and once Collection 2 hits, that's going to be up to Volume 6. So I, 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 I will reread this eventually. It's been a long time since I read them. Actually, just for people who are interested as well, this is actually the full of the first series, I believe. I'm sure that all of uh, this is Season 1, so if you are, are uh, uh, into Full Metal Panic and you want to kind of ha go down memory lane, Go check this one out because it's covering all of season one. And that's it. But no, it's not because I've got digital stuff as well. And my God, I have a lot of digital stuff. First up is bottom tier character Tomozaki. A series that I hear absolutely nobody talking about. And everybody should be talking about this one. Because my God, it is an absolute fantastic of a series. I did do a full video on it so go check that out but uh, to summarize it up to give it the elevator pitch it's all about a, a young man who believes he's got the the lowest denominator in life he was born ugly and all of that stuff and the girl just goes no you can be popular if you try and he's just like you know what that could be like a game that could be fun I'm gonna try it. Also I bought the Faraway Paladin the boy in the city of the dead um, I picked this up because Bookwalker had a very interesting sale on your 80% back coin back on um, Volume 1. So if you bought a Volume 1, you got tons of coins back. And I had tons of coins already, so I basically bought like loads of anime and man like, anime and manga, light novels and manga, just for pretty much nothing. Yeah, gotta love them beautiful deals. I also picked up Her Majesty's Swarm, Volume 1. The author is the 606 Special Information Battalion. Interesting. This looks like a spider. Apparently it's like Overlord only with spiders. And I know there's a spider isekai, but I don't know. This I, I kind of felt like I wanted a little bit more. I'm in a spider mood. So yeah, this one looked quite interesting. I thought I'd check it out. Not read it though. I also picked up Gal Gohan. I'm assuming this is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z, only he's a Gal and cooks food. Don't know much about it. The artwork looked pretty nice. Um, I heard it's pretty terrible, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be interested into giving my full opinion on this when I get a chance to read it. Yeah. I also picked up SCP Foundation, Iris Through the Looking Glass. Um, I, I had a few people recommend this one and I was kind of like, you know what, I should probably check it out. I, I've always been interested in this whole SCP Foundation because I know there's a lot of content out there for it in terms of manga, crossovers, even video games. So this is going to be one that's interesting to check out in the near future. Warning, the Foundation database is classified. Access by unauthorized personnel is strictly prohibited. Perpetrators will be tracked, located, and detained. Well, that's just marvellous. I could do with a stint in jail. I could actually read some of these things. I also picked up a classic. I can't talk, really talk about it. I've never seen the anime of this one. I don't know how. I read the manga a while ago, but um, at least volume one. But I've never actually checked out the light novel. And because it was on sale, I was just like, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. Finally, I have, oh my god, I can't even review this. I can't even see this before because I'll just get demonetized. Yeah, I have After School Witchcraft. That's what we're calling it. Honestly, I expected this one to be terrible. It's got a really bad review on and score on my anime list. But it was actually good, which almost leads me to believe that my anime list is not always right. Fight me. No, this is about the story of a young girl who comes across uh, her sensei who is a magician 
and he's just doing all these experiments on the night and she gets dropped into it because he finds her hidden magical talent and yeah that's pretty much what we're expecting with this one it's a lot of fun it's a lot of intrigue um there's a lot of etchiness in as well which you can probably imagine it does get past the etchiness quite quickly though so if you're kind of wanting a decent uh, witchcraft story yeah consider checking this one out and that is it for me i've picked up a lot of stuff i actually picked up a lot more digital stuff but i want to cover them once i've actually um, had a chance to digest them. I'm doing a little thing on uh, an interesting si uh, side project at the moment which made me have to buy a few things. They were all cheap though so it's all good and I say cheap they were, they were all 69p each. Can't argue with that. But that's it for me. Thank you for coming and if you did like this please leave a like, please consider subscribing it really helps out the channel blah 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 and let me know in the comments what you have picked up this month and I'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. Thanks again for staying. Goodbye.